Over-the-horizon radars have been around for a long time, but perfecting them, to the point where they have become operationally reliable and significant, has taken time. They can offer tremendous benefits, including extreme range and detection of stealth aircraft, but they also have limitations, including determining height and identifying precise location. Also, the radars need large amounts of power and have to be built on flat, open terrain. Additionally, their immobility also makes them highly vulnerable to attack, which in the past prompted military planners to shift their focus to airborne early warning and control systems. But when operating under good conditions, they offer a capability no other terrestrial system can match. G'day and salutations. Today's briefing, over the horizon super radars, extreme range, anti-stealth capable surveillance system. This briefing will primarily cover Australia's JAWN system, but I'll also touch on US, Chinese and Russian systems that operate in the Indo-Pacific. This briefing is unclassified. There are two broad types of over-the-horizon radars, a backscatter or skywave radars and surface wave radars, which have greater range than traditional radars, but not to the extent of the backscatter systems. I won't be covering surface wave systems in this briefing. Backscatter radars utilise the ionosphere to achieve long ranges, and the ionosphere being that layer of the Earth's atmosphere which contains a high concentration of ions and free electrons and is able to refract radio waves. It lies about 80 to 1,000 kilometres above the Earth's surface and forms the boundary between Earth's lower atmosphere and the vacuum of space. Backscatter radars use sky wave or skip propagation in which a high frequency radio signal is beamed skywards from a transmitter and refracted down from the ionosphere to illuminate a target. The echo from the target travels back to a separate receiver site, refracted off the ionosphere again, with the data processed into real-time tracking information. To understand over-the-horizon backscatter radars and their anti-stealth capabilities, we need to touch on radar frequencies. Listed here are some common military radar frequency bands, with an example frequency given for each. The high frequency, or HF, part of the spectrum is from 3 to 30 MHz. Backscatter radars will use the best frequency within the HF band, depending on the conditions of the atmosphere and the sunspot cycle. For these reasons, systems using sky waves typically employ real-time monitoring of the reception of backscattered signals to continually adjust the frequency of the transmitted signal. Our backscattered radars are capable of detecting stealth or very low observable aircraft and at very long ranges because of the low frequency, long wavelength signal they emit. But these frequencies don't provide the fidelity needed to target a stealth aircraft. For that, you need radars with higher frequency and shorter wavelengths. Now, modern stealth fighters are designed to delay detection from high-frequency radars broadcasting in parts of the S, C, X and KU bands because these systems are capable of providing a weapons-grade lock. Now, depending on the radar cross-section of the target aircraft, uh, at the angle at which the radar is targeting the aircraft, uh, remembering that radar cross-sections are not uniform across an aircraft, this targeting range might be very short. A note when you read about the radar cross-section of a particular aircraft, the figure given is likely from the most advantageous angle. Australia first started researching over the horizon backscatter technology in the 1950s, with the effort becoming a core project in 1970. Then known as Jindalee, development milestones included the first ship detected in 1983 and an aircraft being automatically tracked in 1984. Following two years of extensive phase five verification activities, JORN, as it is known today, was declared fully operational in 2014. The JORN network is operated by number one remote sensor unit, or 1RSU, and comprises a control centre known as the JORN Coordination Centre, or JCC, at RAF Base Edinburgh in South Australia, and three transmit-receive locations. Radar 1 near Longreach in Queensland, Radar 2 near Laverton in Western Australia, and Radar 3 near Alice Springs in the Northern Territory. 
It not only provides 24-hour military surveillance of the northern and western approaches to Australia, but also serves a civilian purpose in assisting and detecting illegal entry, smuggling and unlicensed fishing. The system currently provides target type, speed, heading and approximate position, but it is not overly accurate. As JORN is reliant on the interaction of signals with the ionosphere, disturbances in the ionosphere adversely affect performance. The most significant factor influencing this is solar changes, including sunrise, sunset and sunspot activity. The effectiveness of JORN is also reduced by extreme weather, including lightning and rough seas. Additionally, searching for both air and maritime targets at the same time is said to be problematic and detecting wooden boats is highly unlikely. So JORN currently provides wide area surveillance of Australia's northern and western approaches. Its range is said to be from 1,000 to 3,000 kilometres, but anecdotal evidence suggests a range of at least 4,000 kilometres from the Australian coastline, depending on atmospheric conditions, with some capability apparently as far north as the Korean Peninsula. Now there are areas of overlap where two or even three radars can provide coverage. Australia is looking to enhance the JORN system to provide coverage of Australia's eastern approaches. The JORN site at Longreach in central Queensland would be expanded to look east as well as north, covering Papua New Guinea to the Solomon Islands, Vanuatu and New Caledonia. As mentioned, the transmit and receive sites require a large flat area together with significant power requirements. Of course, such a system is immobile and easily targeted. Moving to other countries, the US was one of the pioneers of over-the-horizon radar technology, with the joint US-UK Cobra MIS system temporarily operational in 1972. The US would eventually construct six backscatter systems, three on the west coast and three on the east coast of the US operating in the 5 to 28 megahertz range. In 2018, development started on the High Frequency Tactical Multi-Mission Over the Horizon Radar, or TACMOR, a technology prototype to expand air and maritime awareness over the Western Pacific. A TACMOR radar station in Palau, Micronesia, is expected to be operational in 2026. China has also invested in backscatter systems with at least two operational. Unfortunately, clear images are difficult to come by. For China, apart from surveillance, the over-the-horizon radars are also an important capability in queuing for anti-ship ballistic missile strikes, in conjunction with other systems which are needed for specific targeting. The coverage of these Chinese over-the-horizon systems includes the Korean Peninsula, Sea of Japan and Japan itself, East China Sea, Taiwan, the Philippines and the Philippine Sea. There are suggestions of a third site that would cover the South China Sea. Uh, note on this image, the lines are illustrative only, showing the approximate northern and southern boundaries of coverage. Uh, also, the links of the lines do not represent the range of the system. Now, Russia also has an over the horizon capability in the Pacific. The then Soviet Union, which was also a pioneer in over the horizon technology, with an early operational system known as Duga-1, in the west as Steel Yard, starting operation in 1976. Built near Chernobyl, its loud and repetitive pulses in the middle of the shortwave radio bands led to it being known as the Russian woodpecker by amateur radio operators. A second system, Duga-2, the eastern system, was located near Komsomolsk on Amur, near Vladivostok in the Soviet Far East. Recently, Russia has developed a new system known as the 29 Bravo 6 container, with the first site in European Russia being operational and a second site being developed. This new container radar site, located in Amur Oblast in Russia's Far East, will monitor the Pacific region from Kamchatka, the Sea of Japan, and deep into the Pacific Ocean likely overlapping with Chinese systems. In summary, over the horizon backscatter systems offer some important capability advantages, such as extreme range and the ability to detect stealth or low observable targets. 
However, they are not a panacea for long-range surveillance. They have limitations and vulnerabilities, including operating at sunrise and sunset, sunspot activity, and being large immobile targets. However, they continue to offer significant capabilities that complement other intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance systems. That concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from subscribers, so please subscribe, like, and share. Until next time, Vale de Cerro.